and other stuff is just distraction. I ain't worried about your facts, and I ain't worried what you're lacking. I ain't worried what they think and see is different than they acting. Yeah, it's time to get it popping. It's time to get it cracking. Demons love to see you retract and spark a negative reaction. Get the shaming and attack and see you running and they tracking. Put the paddle to your back and bring the pressure like a track. Just know that Jesus got your back. It don't matter where you at. We serve the Lord. I'm sure you heard that phrase before. They back me in the corner, but I keep that phrase slow. See my body, he's the owner, and they back up when he shows. Bring that darkness if you wanna. They back up when he glows, so take hold. They can kill the body, not the soul. They like to take spice, but my life is what he chose. I like to rock the mic, but I gave the Lord the flow. Demons tried to start a fight, but Jesus came in close and those are less work. Man, you gotta know your worth. I know that life hurts, but you can pick before your birth. Less work. Man, I'm trying to find a church. I ain't talking about a building, but the salt of the earth. Less work. Man, I had to make a choice. Lift this name so high. Use my voice as a voice. Less work. Sis, no, he sees you hurting. He can make you look refurbished, and he gave your life. Invest in God's kingdom is the missing. Just checking if you listen. Don't know if you missed it. You know our Savior's risen. No matter if you're tricking or locked up in the prison. Accept our Lord and Savior. Come and be a Christian. Accept the Lord's vision. See what he's fixing. See those walls kicked in. Even if they fenced in. Tearing down strongholds. Even if they fenced in. You can't take the heat. Then get about the kids. Last word. Hey, 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 hey. Good evening, good evening, good evening, good evening. Good evening, Sister Tosh. How are you doing on tonight? Hola, hola, hola. It's good to see everyone on tonight. Hope everyone is having a great day on purpose. Let's work by Risky. Right, look, see Mighty and Risky Music. Amen, amen. We'll give people a few more minutes to jump on. It's been an amazing day. Hola, Sister Rama. Hope you're doing well. Hola, hola, hola. I am ex I'm super excited on tonight. So I hope everyone is coming and pulling their chair up to the table because God has some great words for us on tonight. Amen. It's, uh, yes, let's work. That's right. <laughs> let's work. We have a lot of work to do. Amen. But we can, we can uh, work um, from our seated positions. Amen. Our seated positions. We can work from our seated positions. Not that we're trying, like, like we don't have to earn it, but we get to work from our seated positions. Amen. Good evening, Minister Michelle. Good evening, Sister Lane. Hola, hola, hola. Uh, welcome on this Wednesday night, this uh, wonderful Wednesday evening. Beautiful weather outside here in, in the state of Michigan, here in Holt and Lansing, the surrounding areas. Beautiful, beautiful. Good evening, Brother Joshua Southern. That's right. Let's work. We were working out, y'all. Good evening, Sister Marilyn Woodard. Hope you're doing great on today. Yeah, let's get some hearts going before we jump into this word on tonight. You know, I love to see you guys on tonight. So I'm giving you some hearts in the beginning. Let's shift it up a little bit. Give me some hearts and some love on tonight. Amen. I'm ready to get, uh, jump into this word shortly, but I, you know, I love to see the hearts and the emojis and the action going back and forth because I believe God has an on-time word for us on tonight. Amen. Thank you all. You guys are so great. You are so wonderful. You're wonderful. You're wonderful. So Father, we thank you right now. We thank you for this moment in time just to sit up at your table and to feast of you, to learn from you, to glean from you. Holy Spirit, I invite you in on tonight. Have your way in me and through me. And I thank you that you touch the people online on tonight right now, the online community, and those who will join later. Father, I thank you for this right now word, this right now word, this right now word from you. I thank you that it edifies, it encourages, Lord God, that it comforts, it does correct. But I thank you right now that you come to encourage us, Lord, on tonight, to grow us up, to mature us on tonight. Amen. Father, you are so awesome. You're so awesome, and you never leave us the way that we came. So we thank you right now, Father God, for growth on tonight. Thank you for growing us up, maturing us, Lord God, to be more like your son, Jesus. And I thank you right now for healing on tonight. I thank you for healing right now. 
in the name of Jesus, where people are, are hurting right now. I thank you for healing hearts, healing minds. I thank you for healing in the body on tonight. I thank you for healing in the heart on tonight, Lord God. I thank you for healing even in the hospitals right now. Holy Spirit, do what you do best. I thank you, God, for being Jehovah Rapha, our healer, Lord God. I thank you that you're everything that we need on tonight, Lord God. Whatever the needs are on tonight, Father God, you are so awesome. You are so great. You know everything about each one of us, and you know what each one one of your children need on tonight. So Father God, we, we speak you into the situation on tonight. Whatever situations your children, they find themselves in, we find ourselves in. Father, we invite you in on tonight. We invite you in on tonight. We invite you in. We surrender unto you on tonight. Speak to us on tonight. Speak to our hearts on tonight, Lord God. Speak to our hearts on tonight. And we'll be careful to give you all the praise, the honor, and the glory. And it's in Jesus' name we give you thanks and praise. Amen. Amen, 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 amen. Y'all, God is awesome on tonight, I'm telling you. So I, I sent the little thing out. I was like, breaking news, uh, Popeye's is open by the church. People are excited for Popeye's. I said, amen. So look, that might be breaking news to everybody else. So when you leave church on Sundays, y'all can go to Popeye's, amen, <laughs> and get y'all some chicken. It's finally open. Pastor Mark was just talking about how long it took how long it was taken to be open. So Popeye's is finally open. Amen. So all those who want Popeye's and you've been waiting for it to open up over here off of Cedar and Willoughby over here in this area, it is finally open. If we were at church, I'd be like, touch your neighbor. It's finally open. Or you could put that in the chat. Popeye's is finally open. <laughs> laugh to do it good as medicine. Amen. And sometimes we need to laugh. Amen. With everything going on, I'm telling you, it's so good to laugh on tonight. Amen. Amen. So anyway, um, if you have your Bibles, this we're going to start. I'm going to go back and revisit Matthew chapter 13, 24 through 25. And then I'm going to jump to Matthew chapter 18, 21 through 22. Amen. So Matthew chapter 13, 24 through 25. And then we'll go to Matthew chapter 18, 21 through 22. Amen. So I'll jump in right there. It says in Matthew chapter 13, verse 24 through 25. Jesus told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seeds in his field. Amen. But while everyone was sleeping, while everyone was sleeping, while everyone was sleeping, his enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and went away. The enemy, he sowed wheat, weeds among the wheat, and he went away. Isn't that just like the enemy? He does his dirt, then he goes on. Amen. And so we jump down to Matthew chapter 18, verse 21 through 22. It says, Then Peter came to him and asked, Lord, how often should I forgive someone who sins against me? Seven times? No, not seven times. Jesus replied, but 70 times seven Amen. Then Peter came and asked him, Lord, how often should I forgive someone who sinned against me? Seven times? No, not seven times. Jesus replied, but 70 times seven. Amen. And I want to talk to you from this topic on tonight. Don't respond to that. Amen. Don't respond to that. Safeguarding against the weed of offense. Amen. Safeguarding against the weed of offense. Oh, yeah. That's a weed that was sown. The devil, he will sow his weed and then he'll walk away. Amen. Because it says, while everyone was sleeping, his enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and went away. And went away. Amen. That's a lot of W's. He sowed <laughs> weed among the wheat and went away. He's, look, he sowed offense among the wheat. And he went away. So safeguarding against the weed of offense. But I said, don't respond to that. Tell your neighbor, don't respond to that. We're going to safeguard ourselves against, uh, we're going to talk about the weed, the weed of offense on tonight. Amen. Amen. What does it mean to be offended? It means uh, resentful or annoyed. Amen. Typically because of a perceived insult. 
resentful or annoyed, typically because of a perceived insult. Don't say, don't respond to that. We're going to safeguard ourselves against the weed of offense. I don't know about you, but it was so much going on, y'all, these last couple of weeks. I'll just say the last couple of days. I'm just honest. If, and if, it, if, if, you can, if this bears witness with you, you can put it in the chat too. I have been offended. Well, at first I was irritated. And then I said, and, and it's funny how you're like, okay, I'm just thinking it's an irritation. But it really wasn't an irritation. I said, I'm laying there like, I think I'm offended. I am offended. And then I was like, you know, I was like, no, I'm not offended. I'm just mad. It's like a righteous indignation. I am just mad. You know, no, I'm just, I'm just a righteous. And so do y'all know God, look, Holy Spirit has, um, he has a sense of humor. So I'm saying this to myself. And so I, I, I vented for a little bit. Good evening, Minister Sabrina. I, I vented for a little bit to pastor on Monday, but I laid in the bed and I said, I'm not, I'm not offended. This is to myself, me and the Lord. I'm not offended. I, I'm just, you know, just a righteous indignation. I, you know, it, it was interesting. So I, I, I got up Tuesday morning and pastor, uh, he gets up and goes to work before I, you know, get up. I'm still sleeping in. And so anyway, when I got up, my alarm went off. I'm listening to my worship music, running around, do what I need to do, go down the hall. Cause I'm, you know, working from home and I go in my office <laughs> And on my keyboard on my computer, Pastor had placed the book on my computer, The Bait of Satan. <laughs> I walked in there, I was like, I know he didn't. He did not place. And the Lord was telling me, he said, I told you that yesterday. Mind you, I didn't tell Pastor that. But he could pick, he discerned. And it, cause I was like, and I, all I could do was laugh. And I said, I know he did not leave this book, The Bait of Satan, on my computer. And I was laughing. I said, okay, Lord. And so God wanted to touch that. And it wasn't just me. And it was, it was just so many things going on. But it was so interesting. I was thinking about this today. Wouldn't it be nice if we could take a pill to get rid of offense? We have a pill for everything else to get rid of a headache, to get rid of a backache, to get rid of certain things. Wouldn't it be nice to cough syrup for, uh, you know, if we have a cough, wouldn't it be nice if there was a pill that we could take? to get rid of offense. There is no quick way, but God has the answer on tonight. Amen. There's not like you can go in the store and say, I need a, there's a pill bottle that says if you're offended and God is saying, no, I need you to get in my word. I need you to get in my presence. I need you to get in my face. Amen. Because there is no pill. There's no quick fix sometimes. And sometimes when we let things go, they pile up on each other and they fester. And so I'm like, okay, Lord, wow. I said, so I don't know about y'all. If that's you, you, hey, say I'm guilty. I was guilty, y'all. I was like, he came home and I said, I, it, it was like a machete. I was like, and this, and another thing, and another thing, and another thing. Oh, wait a minute. Don't go upstairs, and another thing. I got to tell you about this. I got to tell you about this. Wait a minute. I got to tell you about this. I said, okay, I'm done. I was like, is he probably like, what? And so I was offended by certain things that were going on. Amen. Right. Thank you, Sister Tosh. I'm not by myself. She said, hashtag guilty, resentful or annoyed. I was annoyed typically because of a perceived insult and certain things do happen. And I'm not making light of things that happen. Sometimes, you know, sometimes things do happen. I love y'all. Y'all just, we honest. Look, we are honest in the house on tonight. Thank you, Sister Marilyn and everybody else. Look, we're honest. And sometimes things do happen and we do get offended. But Jesus is saying, look, the enemy has come to sow the weed of offense on tonight. And sometimes that's why I said, don't respond to that. We don't have to respond to everything. You know how they have those out of service little signs you see when the elevator is out of service or a machine. Sometimes we need to put that on. And the word of God is like, put that on your, look, out of service. This is out of service. Uh, you know, you know what I mean? It's out of service for offense. It's out of service to you being petty. It's out of service to your disrespect. It's out of service to your negativity and even your thoughts about me. Certain things we have to put the out of service sign on and we will not engage because if we keep engaging and we respond to everything, we will be offended. We don't have to say, I won't respond to that. Amen. I won't respond to that. Because, see, we respond to so much. And it's like, why? I don't have to respond to your petty. I don't have to respond to what you think about me. The truth is, look, the truth is what you think about me is none of my business. And so, you guys, 
look, don't respond to that. Don't reply back to that. Out of service for that. Look, if that's out of service, we're not going to get petty on tonight. Amen. And so that brings me to my first point. Amen. Everything does not require a response or a reply. And you have to tell yourself, look, say everything does not require a response or a reply. Amen. You don't have to respond to people on the level that they came at you. Amen. You and I, we don't have to respond to people at the level that they've come at us. Amen. Say, look, don't respond to that. Don't respond to that. We do not have to respond to people all the time. Everything does not need a reply or a, rep or a response. Amen. We have to understand that because see, some people are incarcerated by mental exhaustion because they respond to everything. I hope you hear, hear me on tonight. Some people are incarcerated, amen, are incarcerated by mental exhaustion because they respond to everything. And we do not have to respond to people on the level that they came at us. This is a season we have got to make sure we are not allowing the enemy to sow weeds among the wheat in our lives. Amen. And look, don't respond to that. Don't respond to that. Because if you look, let's be, look, look, I mean, right here, let's be honest. Sometimes this is, look, sometimes there is pressure. So there's pressure to respond. Sometimes there is pressure I know, look, there is pressure to respond. There is pressure to respond back. Look, there is pressure to respond back and spill all the tea, especially when somebody do something to you and you know something about them. You're like, oh, I know you ain't coming at me. I know all the tea about you. And you like, do you want me to spill the tea? And look, you can look, you're like, oh, I got, I got text messages. I got, I got receipts. And you want to come at me that way? I got, I got receipts. I got screenshots. Wait a minute. What, what, what? You coming at me? However, God is maturing us and he is looking for growth. Say, God is maturing me and he is looking for growth. Because it's easy to say, look, I, I, I won't respond. But when you got the goods on people, it's, you're like, oh, Lord, I got the tea. I can have a tea party with everything I know about you. But and you, you want, uh, what, what, uh, what? You want to do what? Again, everything does not require a response or a reply. Because God is looking for growth. Amen. He is say he is maturing me. He is maturing me. He is maturing me. Because the enemy, listen, the, look, the Lord is sowing wheat. The enemy is sowing seed. I mean weed. Because there's always two things going on. Do you want to have the growth of wheat or weeds? God is looking for growth. He is say he is maturing us. Amen. And look, are you saying, Pastor, are you asking me to doormat? No. I'm asking you to be Christ like. God is not asking us to be doormats, but he is asking us to be Christ-like. I'll say that again. Not a doormat, but Christ-like. Not a doormat, but Christ-like. I'm, you know, I'm not saying you don't get upset. I just told you. I was upset a this week a couple times, and I was like, Lord, have mercy. He says, but I'm asking you to be Christ-like. See, wheat, wheat is it represent, it's growth. That means it's growing. There's wheat. It's healthy. But the weeds, look, the, why people were sleeping, why you were unaware. And see, and I'm glad, I'm glad I have mature, it, it matters who's around you. I'm glad my husband is mature enough to know she's just not mad. She, there's, there's a root of bitterness trying to grow there. She's offended. And I'm glad that he didn't try to pamper me or enable me, but he gave the word to me. I hope you hear me. The people you are around, are they giving the word to you? And he didn't force it upon me. It, but it was cute. I walked in there. I walked in ready with my car. I looked. I was like, I know he did not leave a book on my computer about offense. And, I, and I'm just saying. But that's who you need in your life. People like that who will tell you the truth. Or they can discern things. And he and he knows what I was going through because he understood. But he is mature enough to know, okay, um, let me help her out right here. And so while, look, while they were sleeping, while we were sleeping, while we were sleeping, while we are venting, while we think we're just talking, the enemy is sowing weeds. Amen. And so, like I said, we're not called to be doormats, but God is looking for growth. We are called to be Christ-like. Amen. Because listen, but uh, He want, God wants growth. 
He wants growth. And don't get offended. You must realize these people have, you got to realize when people do things to you, and some people are going to do things to you, they'll, they, 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 people say all kinds of stuff. People do all kinds of things. Some things you just got to let it go. I'm not saying every situation you find yourself in is easy to let it go, but I'm saying like right now with the things that are coming at us, you have to ask yourself, does this person have anything to do with my destiny? Amen. Is this even going to matter in five minutes? Do they have anything to do with my life? Amen. And so that's what I'm saying. So certain things like, you know what? We had to let it run off of us. Because listen, do you want do you want the seed to be wheat or weeds? And you have to ask yourself that because the enemy, he is he's definitely sowing. There's so much going. He's definitely sowing. He's he's looking for an open vessel. He's looking for a willing vessel. Any open area he can slide in, he'll slide in. And he doesn't matter. He doesn't care how it gets in as long as it gets in. Amen. As long as it gets in, he doesn't matter who he uses to get it in there. He will use anything and anybody. He will use any now a person, place or thing to get it in. And so that's why God is coming along tonight with his word so we can wake up. Amen. Tell your neighbor it's time to wake up. It's time for us to stay alert in every area. Amen. And so with Matthew chapter 27, I want to read verses 13 through 14. And it says, uh, don't you hear all these charges they are bringing against you? Pilate demanded, but Jesus, say, but Jesus, but Jesus made no reply, not even to a single charge to the great amazement or surprise of the governor. Amen. Again, that's Matthew 27. 13 and 14, when Jesus was before Pilate, it says, don't you hear all these charges they are bringing against you? Pilate demanded, but Jesus, say, but Jesus made no reply. Not even to a single charge, to the great amazement. They were surprised. They were surprised. Say, don't respond to that. Don't respond to that. Jesus didn't have to respond to that. And it's interesting because sometimes people will say, didn't you hear what they said? Girl, I heard what they said. Are you going to respond to that? If I was you, I would say this. Girl, they said this. And the enemy will always make sure that you heard what somebody said. He will always make sure that it comes in your ear gate. He will always make sure that certain things get back to you. So that's why it's so important on this next point that we guard our hearts. The Bible says in Proverbs 4 and 23, above all else, above all else, guard your heart for everything you do flows from it. So, amen, number one, everything does not require response or reply. Number two, guard our hearts. Guard your heart. Guard your heart. Point two, guard your heart. Above all else, above all else, above all else, guard your heart for everything you do flows from it and interesting something happened to me recently amen i'm telling you it's been crazy see we are not exempt from getting offended amen we're not just because we're pastors and we're people leaders and all that we are not exempt and so recently something happened i was i'm telling you it was just recent i was offended at a couple people this week and for and i kept thinking about it over and over and there was a couple people i was like okay and it, it was festering in my heart. And I had, and I started getting a deep resentment towards several of these people in the last few days. And I was like, okay, Lord. And I said, when I wasn't thinking about the offense, I was talking about the offense. Because I was offended. I was like, are y'all for real? I mean, I had like, I was livid. And it was like, I started thinking about it and I was talking about it. And listen, y'all, the more I talked about it, the more my words, my words, the more my words, say her word, my words fed my anger within my soul. My very, the words out of my mouth. And see, we're thinking it's hurting other people, even though we're thinking it's other people, but the words I'm speaking out of my mouth, it fed my soul. Amen. It fed that anger. It fed that, it was like me, I'm feeding, I'm, I'm feeding on anger. I was feeding, look, I was eating on a fence. I was eating it. And so I got, look, the more I talked about it, the more I thought about it, the more I let these words, out, the more angry I got, amen. And my word, kept, look, say my words kept the offense alive. And before I knew it, 
I was becoming angry, resentful, and bitter. Yeah, I'm talking about it. I'm eating it. I'm feeding myself. And the more I did that, I became angry, resentful, and bitter. What is offense? Resentful or annoyed, typically because of a perceived insult. Yeah, so the more I fed on it, the angrier I got. And I said, okay, God. I said, you have got to help me. And I said, okay. So I prayed about it. I, I went before the Father. I was like, Lord, you know, I, we all have different emotions. We all have different reactions to things. We all, you know, because listen, y'all, all these billions of people on the planet, on the planet, we got billions of people on the planet. We Look, we are going to offend somebody and somebody is going to offend us, right? Knowingly and unknowingly. We are going to want, we, we, we offend people. I know we think that we don't. But we offend people, and other people forget, they offend us. Amen. And I like Jesus said, "How many?" Look, Peter said, "How many times should I forgive them?" And you know, Peter, Peter, like, look, Lord, go back and read eighteen. Says, then Peter came to him and asked, "Lord, how often should I forgive someone who sins against me?" It's seven times. Peter, like, <laughs> you tell me seven times. Okay, so after the seven time, you know, how we do, Lord, that the first time, okay, the second time, okay, third, you know, we start keeping a record. I'm so glad God does not keep records on us. But we know we'll keep a record. Okay, God. They did one, two, okay, three, four, five, seven. What? Eight, we done. Okay, it's over. I'm like, Lord, okay, you can forgive them. But, and then Jesus is like, how many times have I forgiven you, Peter? Isn't that funny? We want forgiveness, but we, look, we want all the forgiveness of Jesus. We want him to forgive us. But look. Past, present, and future. Now that other person, you know that person we don't care for, or that person we don't think deserves forgiveness. Y'all know we got a couple people that we don't think we like. Mm, I can't believe the Lord forgave them. I know I'm guilty. Look, Sister Rebecca, I hear you, girl. I, I'm telling you, I am. I'm like Lord. No, you can, Lord. You surely did not forgive them. You surely, I know you're not forgiving them. God, I know. Don't you see? And isn't it funny how I'm like, Lord, and not saying that people don't deserve certain things, but I look at it like this. When certain things happen, I'm like, okay, Lord, you look, only you know the ins and outs of everybody. Only you know who's going to repent away. God, only you know, because it's like, pastor asked me something the other day about a situation. I said, well, I think they deserve blah, blah, blah. I said, however, it's not up to me, but that's why it ain't up to me. <laughs> I said, I think, yeah. I said, however, God knows more than me, and I'm glad he knows more than me. I said, because there are some situations I'm sure I deserved a lot. But I said, so I'm going to leave that for Jesus. But if you asking me to ask me, oh, yeah, they deserve. I said, but God is merciful. I said, but I'm glad it's on Jesus. It's not on me. Amen. Because, you know, we have to guard our hearts. Because if not, we'll just let everything come in. And like I said, I was letting so much come in. I was feeding on my own thing and making myself mad and wondering why I was still mad. And the enemy, like he says, he sows seeds and he walks away. He sows, look, he sows the seed of, uh, of offense. Then he walks away and everybody else is fighting. So he sows discord. Then he walks away. And you're like, what happened? He'll sow a little bit of this, a little bit of that, a little over here, proceed, and then he walks away. And so, and we have to really, in this time and season, because we are living in the last days, and due to the increase of wickedness, wickedness, the love of many will grow cold. And when Peter asks, Lord, how many times shall I forgive? And see, we don't realize when we're asking that, sometimes we can get into a place of being self-righteous, yeah, let's let's park here for a minute. Because we, we've been forgiven. I, I can't believe they did that. I, I, don't they know who they, you know? And we had this thing. I, I, I've been seeing this thing lately. Like, we have so many people critiquing people in the body. And I'm like, well, who are you supposed to be the church police in the body? Well, they doing this and they're worldly and they this and whatever. And I find myself like, well, did, have we all seen it? What, what, what scripture, what brand of Christianity are you representing? And I made a post the other day like, okay, if we had a camera on us all day, would they find us sinning? 
I mean, maybe it's just me, but I'm like, you know, we have to really come out of that self-righteous thing. Like you're the only one, right? Nobody else is right, but you. And so we, and we can get a, and, then we, and it's because of offense. I'm offended that they're doing this and I'm offended. And then you start critiquing everything and everybody around you. I, this person ain't Christ. Like this person ain't this. I can't believe they did this. Why they sang with this artist? Why they do this? And I'm like, well, who did you lead to Christ this week? What jail did you go to visit to, uh, the minister to convicts? And, and we have to really watch out because we can get offended with everybody in the body. And, and then the, the devil, he loves it because he's like, good, because I can get them fighting them. Look, and, and, and in Galatians, talking about y'all keep fighting each other, you're going to devour one another. And so that's what, look, he wants us to be offended. The enemy wants us to be offended because then we'll fight against each other and he gets off the hook. Amen. So we really need to watch that because we'll come from a self-righteous place as if we're the only one right. Well, I don't see anymore, so I can judge. No, 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 no. You, you not, no. We, come on now. Nobody has arrived. Nobody has arrived. None of us. Until Jesus come back, we are all a work in progress. Amen. I don't know about you, but I need, I thank God for them twins called grace and mercy. Amen. And so God is just growing us up. And yeah, we've been, look, and when, when, when we operate in that place of self-righteousness, we are being employed by the enemy. He, look, we're getting a W-2 at the end of the year because we're doing his bidding. Amen. And I'm like, Lord, help me not to be a part of the problem, but help me to walk Christ-like. Help me to be mature. Give me the sermon of what to say and what not to say. Because we don't know what, the enemy. He loves to look. The traveler is always traveling. And he's always looking for the weakest link. And people, you can think you are so right, pointing out all the different things. This is wrong with the body of Christ. This is wrong with the body of Christ. You're offended at the body of Christ. But my thing is this. Have you looked in the mirror lately? Before we start pointing fingers, come on now, that's all of us. Before we start pointing fingers at everybody in the body of Christ, look in your own mirror. Sweep around, look, they say sweep around your own house before you start judging everybody else's house. And make sure your stuff, I tell people all the time at work, before you start uh, dogging management out, you better make sure your work is tight and right. Because I'm telling you right now, when you come at us, I'm like, oh, so you want to come at me? Let me see. Let's talk about that time and attendance problem. Okay. Let's talk about how you always on the phone. We both be doing your job. See, that's what I'm saying. You don't realize why you're pointing fingers and critiquing people. See, that spotlight gets on you. And then we don't look, we don't like that spotlight on us, but you don't mind critiquing everybody else. We really need to be careful of this critiquing of the body of Christ. And I'm offended and I can't believe they did this and da 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 da. And they shouldn't be doing this. And God is not into this. How you know what God is telling people to do? You got a look, you got a bug in the house or something. What you the FBI for the church? I'm just saying, we go in there tonight because this is how people are just getting caught up. Because why did they look while they were sleeping, the enemy was sowing seeds. He was sowing weed. He was sowing his his division. And we need to really safeguard against that offense. Amen. Because when we start putting the spotlight on everybody else, I'm telling you, I said, Well, Lord, okay. Touch my heart. Why? Because I'm, I'm looking at everybody. Else. I'm like, Lord, deal with my heart. Amen. And leads me to point number three. Look, even if people are doing something, look, continue to bless. I know that's hard. Con look, just start blessing people. I'm like, Lord, just bless them, Jesus. Amen. Luke 6 and 28, it says, bless those who curse you and pray for those who mistreat you. Bless those who curse you. And pray for those who mistreat you. Now, I don't know about you. Sometimes we like bless them. And see, what does it look? What does it mean to bless those who curse you? To curse means to speak evil of someone. And to bless those who curse you means to speak the truth in love about them. To speak the truth in love about them. Even when they are cursing you. I'm going to repeat that one again. To curse means to speak evil of someone. To bless those who curse you, it means to speak the truth and love about them, even when they are cursing you. Amen. Listen, listen. Most of us would agree. Okay. This, most of us would agree. A thousand, look, it's a thousand times easier to cuss someone out 
Oh, yeah. It's easy. You're like, Pastor, it's easy to cuss someone out. Amen. And yes, it, it, it counts. <laughs> Look, it, it, it's you like, well, it's easy if I cuss someone out, right? And yeah, it also counts if, look, you might not cuss them out verbally, but sometimes people, we those those quiet ones, I don't cuss. Well, you might have cussed them out in your head. Amen. See, it's easier to cuss them out or cuss them out in our head than to pray for that person, right? Well, I'm just going to, uh, well, I don't say nothing, but it might be in your head, right? I'm cussing them out in my head. Because some people, we got hit. Look, I, I know some of us, we clean up better than others. Some people, they cuss verbally. But some people, I'm, I'm quiet ones. We got some head. Look, we got some head cussers. I'm cussing you out in my head. My mouth ain't moving, but in my head and my heart, I'm cussing you out, right? And so you don't get off the hook either, amen. It says because the Bible says, "Bless those who curse you and pray for those who mistreat you," right? Look, look. God wants our look. He wants us to open our mouths and bless the offender. Look, look. I was thinking about as my grandma D used to say. Do it until you feel it. She said, baby, do it. She said, my grandma, my, she was so funny. Because she know I would argue with anybody. And I messed up my don't respond. I would, she said, Jackie, you're you going to prove your point. But girl, you will argue with a side pole if it can talk back. She said, you got to learn to let some stuff go. She said, look, bless them. Look, do it until you feel like it. But she was right. I said, yeah, I, I, I would. I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna prove my point to you. She said, "Baby, you will argue with a sign pole. You thinking this one talking about if we can talk back to you or just argue? You just, you just argue with everybody." I was like, "Huh? Maybe a little truth to that, amen." But some stuff it does not require our response. But do it until look. It, it, I'm not saying you're gonna feel like blessing them, but you're like some of y'all like, oh, uh, but, mm, I can't get that B out, Lord. That blood. Mm, 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 mm. Well, we got to do it until we feel like it, right? Amen. Besides, it's not about whether or not we feel like it. It's about obeying the word of God. I mean, no, sometimes you don't feel like it, but God is looking for growth. It's about obeying the word of God. And there's two things we need to consider on tonight. Amen. When people do stuff to us, it, we, we do. I, I, I'm guilty. I'm telling you. I, and that's one thing about pastor. We're transparent. We'll tell you, because we're like, uh, we do not, we're not around here floating. We deal with everyday life like everybody else, amen. People make us mad like they make you mad. Coworkers make us mad, and I'm like, it don't matter. Like, Lord, you know I want to, I do want to say this. I want, uh, you know. And so, but there's two things, you know, we don't have to respond back to everything, amen. Say, I do not have to respond back to everything. Even tonight when we get up, say, I don't have to respond back to everything. And two things, look, you got to think about it. when people do things or like um, they cut you off in traffic or not just that people, you know, people that that really don't have nothing to do with your life. You got two things to consider. Do they even know you? Like if they cut you off in traffic, people giving you the let the have peace sign. And, you know, you know people, we, we were laughing about this, but it's so true. People brave in their car. They get real brave in their car. They do a lot of stuff these days in their car. But I guarantee you, if you pull it over, because some people, they getting brave in their car. They say a lot of stuff because they're in their car, right? But my thing is, I don't have to chase you down the street because you hear about road rage. If you're doing this, I'm not chasing you down to go prove a point to you. Look, I'm thinking, you got to consider, do they even know you? Do they even have your number? Can they call you? No. So why do you care about what they're thinking? Why do you got to prove your point to them? Why do you got to respond to them? They don't know you. Look, I'm like, they don't even know my full name. Do they know my number? Nope. Do they know my full name? Mm -mm. So why am I, look, is that number in my phone? No. So why am I letting people I don't even know that don't even know me get me moved? They don't know me. They don't know my full name. My, they like, is Jackie. No, my full name is Jacqueline. Amen. They don't know us. So why are we letting people who don't even really know us have nothing to do with our destiny Get us, get us off track and all, you know, wound up and, you know, and just mad, just angry, just offended. They have nothing to do with our destiny. Amen. And so my thing is, look, I don't even, you got to get to this point. You don't know me well enough, amen, for me to value what you are trying to articulate. Some people, look, I'm going to tell you this right now. We, some people do so much to, uh, for people to value them. And, and, and then we get offended if they don't. But my thing is, why do you need their approval anyway? You can change your hair. You can dye it. You can have long nails. You can do all this. My thing is this. Why? 
Sometimes people are just not going to like you. Some people are just to be offended by you. And my thing is, you got to be like, I don't care. I'm not responding to that. I'm not replying to that. And you have to be okay with that. Amen. Say, I don't have to respond to that. Just know some people just not going to like you. And why would you be offended? Because some people don't like themselves. We offended because they, they do this, whatever. They don't even like themselves. Amen. So some stuff you got to look. What they got to do with me? They don't even know me like that. Everything does not require your response. Again, the enemy has sown, he's sown weed. Amen. And God is looking for growth. Amen. And you have to ask yourself, you know, consider number two. Is this person, is this a person that is critical? Is, a, is this person a, a critical a component to my spiritual growth? Is this a person that is critical, that is a critical component component to my spiritual growth? See, look, when you are offended, you won't even receive from those whom God has sent in your life to help you mature and grow. Amen. When you are offended, you won't even receive from the people whom God has sent in your life to help you grow. Because look, are they are like Pastor and I? I believe we're critical components to your life to help you grow. Amen. And so, and if and if you're not careful, you get offended. Well, who are they supposed to be? But God has places in your life to help you grow, to help you mature, to take you to the next level. Amen. We don't keep want to keep you as babies. Amen. So certain things do, man. So and the enemy, he would love to sow a weed there. Amen discord there those are two things to think about amen and so in my closing i want to close with this in romans 12 and 18 if it is possible as far as it depends on you as far as it depends on you as far as it depends on you live at peace with everyone yeah Say, as far as it depends on me, Lord, help me to live at peace with everyone. And we might not like what people do. We might not like what they say. People, Some people are saying the craziest stuff. But you can have the, the choice is yours tonight. Say, I don't have to respond to that. Do I have to respond to that? Does that even deserve a reply? And some things are, look, you can keep your peace. You can maintain your peace. You can measure peace by not responding to everything. And as far as it depends on me, live at peace with everyone. Some people go out and look for an argument. Some people are waging arguments. Some people are just doing stuff, hoping you... Um, they, they, some people wear clothes that are offensive. They wear shirts and different things. You got people, bumper stickers. You ever mind your own business and you'll see a bumper sticker? Or a person's shirt, and you just look at them, and I have, to, and I know me, I have to catch myself. That's one thing when we were wearing masks, people really couldn't see how you were looking at people, and I would see certain bumper stickers or shirts, and I'm like, is they for real? And I caught myself one time, a person had this bumper sticker on their car, and I had to, I want to pull up and see what they look like, and I, because I almost want to say, is you serious? You got that? But I, is, we had to catch ourselves. But as far as it depends on me. I need to live at peace with everyone. Even if I see that crazy bumper sticker, even if I see crazy flags, even if I see all this crazy stuff going on, the Bible says, if it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. It doesn't mean I have to like it, but as far as it depends on me, I got to turn my eye and fix my eyes on something else. Well, Lord, what that he said, as far as it depends. Well, Lord, they call me out of my name as far as it depends on you. Well, Lord, don't you see as far as it depends on you. Live at peace with everyone. Don't you hear all these charges they are bringing against you? Pilate demanded, but Jesus made no reply. Not even to a single charge. Jesus made no reply. And the goal is to be Christ-like. In these last days, due to the increase of wickedness, the love of many will grow cold. But as far as it, if it's possible, say it's possible with Jesus, 
it's possible. And even if I do have to uh, have talks or crucial conversations with Jesus, it's possible. But as far as it depends on me and you live at peace with everyone. Amen. Well, I pray that this word has blessed you on tonight. I just wanted to let you into my life this week. And so when God deals with me on certain things and I ask him, what do you want me to share with the body? I, I, he said, you're not by yourself. So share this on tonight. And so we want to talk about don't respond to that. Safeguarding against the weed of offense. Amen. So I pray that this word has blessed you all on tonight. God is so good. He's looking for maturity and growth. He's looking for us to be Christ like. Amen. Well, right now, if you want to give on tonight, there is two ways that you can give. The first way is uh, the mobile cash app, which is our dollar sign advancing God's kingdom. That's all one word. The dollar sign advancing God's kingdom. Or you can sow a seed at our website, which is agkm.net forward slash give. Again, that is agkm.net forward slash give and you can sow your seeds there you are sowing into good ground amen tell your neighbor is good ground you're sowing into a good ground amen so yes again god is one to uh share with us on tonight you and me both all of us all of us say don't respond to that say don't respond to that you might get a call you might get a text you might get an email it, it, look, it can come various look. The enemy does not care what vehicle he uses. He'll do it through a text. He'll do it through your, uh, his, your, your messages. He'll do it any, by any means necessary. He'll get try to get it to you. But everything, don't respond to that. Don't respond to that. Don't respond to that. Everything does not require our response. Everything does not require a reply from us. Amen. And I guarantee before this night is out or even tomorrow or during the holidays, because, you know, you might be around family or whatever. Nope. Don't respond to it. Tell them, look, that we're not going to be petty. Amen. We're trying to advance the kingdom. And to advance the kingdom, God is looking for a few mature people, not petty people. So he's looking for uh, some mature saints, not petty saints. Amen. Mature saints, not petty saints. Amen. Well, I'm glad you guys were on tonight. Uh, please join us on Sunday mornings at 10 o'clock a.m. at 2450 Delhi Commerce, Commerce Drive. We would love to see you in the place. Amen. This Sunday, 10 o'clock, 2450 Delhi Commerce Drive. Say so you have got to be there. You got to be there. You got to be there. If not, if you cannot make it in the place, you can join us uh, Facebook Live our online community, but we would love to have you in the place. Amen. I am so glad that you guys were able to jump on tonight. Amen. Take, look, say we're growing. We're growing. Amen. God has been in this series for the last several weeks about the about wheat and weeds and say, look, is this a wheat move or is this a weed move? About making decisions, having discernment. Amen. Putting, look, taking on what's ours and I'm putting off what's not ours. And tonight, don't respond to that. To, uh, safeguarding against the weed of offense. I pray that these messages about wheat and weed have been blessing you the last couple of weeks. Amen. I don't know about you, but it's been blessing me. Amen. So again, I want to pray that you have a wonderful evening on purpose. I love you all. Again, I would love to see you on Sunday, if not in the place online but look it's great to be here part of the community on tonight so i love you i blow kisses to you Mwah! virtual hugs let's throw up some hearts on tonight if this word has blessed you amen amen i love seeing you all again hi sister rebecca good to see you on tonight amen continue blessings to all of you i love you guys so much and i thank you for joining us and not leaving me out here by myself on wednesday nights i think we're having a pretty good time on wednesday nights amen well i love you all and i pray nothing but god's best on, on tonight for you all sweet sleep to our uh to jesus beloved he giving you a sweet sleep on tonight again don't respond to that be blessed <laughs>